Um, ten years ago, this month, a friend of mine died. And he'd, we'd become really good friends in a short period of time. Uh, Raph was dynamic. Uh, he was a chiropractor. Uh, we met because he, when he graduated from college, he went around and did it with locums. Uh, locums are a term that where a doctor goes in and fills in for another doctor. And uh, he did locums around the world and ran into mm, quite a few people who had done classes with me and uh, decided that he wanted to look at my technology. I got to Switzerland. We were spending the winter here. I called him. I said, why don't you come over? We'll meet. Uh, the clinic wasn't up and running. It was a real stressful time for him. He said, I'll try, but I don't think I can. We never did catch up. Uh, in the spring, we got in touch. And he said, my clinic is up and running. I'll have enough people to fill a class for you if you want to come over. <clears throat> and Raph became <clears throat> the first person ever to fill up a class for me. Uh, and he never met me. I went two days early. We did two previews. And he filled the classes up. And he, I said, he and his brother had built a clinic. And it was in a kind of a dilapidated building in this little village called Ware in England. Uh, the first floor had been rented to a real estate office for years, and so they took on the second floor for an office. And the, the reason the second floor wasn't rented before was because there were leaks in the roof where they got the landlord to fix the leaks, <coughs> excuse me, and built this really beautiful functional clinic. And as an entrepreneur, he was ruthless. I mean, if people weren't working out for him, uh, he let them go. Uh, ruthless also, and he knew that if he built the clinic around him, that it was going to own him. And I never met anybody with the courage that he had. He would just one day decide he was going to go home to Cyprus and he would find a doctor to work the clinic for him and say, okay, here's what I do. Come and work for me. Here's the split. I'm going away for a while. He would leave. And it was, it was refreshing to see that sort of ruthlessness in an entrepreneur. But uh, I did my first class, which he attended, and then he attended class after class after class. He did a couple of month-longs uh, 10 years ago in December, well, let's say 2002, 2002 he was uh, diagnosed with terminal cancer. But the events that led up to it were, I think, kind of interesting. Uh, he built this clinic uh, when the landlords and their agents saw what the building was actually capable of. They told him that his lease was up and that he could no longer uh, rent the space, and they kind of took the clinic out from underneath them. And it was a very short time after that he started to get sick. And we were in the clinic cleaning up, taking down fixtures and things, and he wasn't feeling well, and one of the uh, real estate guys came and said, oh, you've done a lot of work in here. Oh, I bet you're glad to get rid of it or something. Raph said, if I had the strength, I would have strangled him. And he said, but he didn't have it. Uh, on December 28th, he was diagnosed with cancer. We, uh, I said, you know, what are you going to do? I had a month long starting in January. He said, well, I'll be in Switzerland in January. I'm going to do your month long. And so I said, okay. And then we started looking for alternative therapies here. We went to a doctor and he said, nothing I can do. He said, anything I do will make this worse. Uh, he went to the Paracelsus Clinic. Uh, we got in there by such happenstance. Uh, we went to another doctor in St. Gala and past clinic and coming back past this little town uh, in Appenzell and I said Nicole I'm just going to stop in and so we stopped in and we're in the waiting room and off in the other room there's all these different machines and stuff and we're sitting and I said you know I can figure these machines out come on I'll get you healed right now uh, the doctor in charge or the doctor we were supposed to see was on the phone and I could hear in his voice that he was from Pennsylvania he walked out into the waiting room and he said, I know who you are. I talked to your wife. I said, I know. I know. You've only got a few minutes. I said, but I said, I just want to talk to you to see whether there's any possibility here. And he said, where is Mrs. We'll use the name for Fufnik. I don't know what this. And the nurse said, she hasn't shown up. He said, what? He said, I'm supposed to have a new patient right now. And he said, yeah, there's, she hasn't shown up. He said, okay, I'm taking this kid. Don't tell anybody. I'm taking him and started working on RAF and uh, doing things. Uh, they were, I don't know if they were unsuccessful. RAF died, but, I, you know, he got better and worse and better and worse. It was quite a, an emotional roller coaster as we went through it. 
And that uh, after Raph passed away, I went back to the clinic, and, and it, there was a, a leprosy feel about it, that, like, I, like I had leprosy. Nobody would talk to me. People who I knew from going to the clinic and being there so often with Raph wouldn't address me. And about a year later, one of the patients from that clinic came and did a class with me. And during the class, all of a sudden she stopped. She said, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know who you are. I said, what? She said, by rumors, I know who you are. She said, you had a friend that had cancer and actually died. I said, yeah. She said, yeah. She said, the rumors that are going around the clinic is that you wanted him dead. And I, it, it hit me here. It was, it was, you know, I was like, what? Uh, she said, yeah, because they said whenever you came into the clinic, you would laugh at him. And I said, is that what was going around? She said, because even Raph, <clears throat> in his weakest state, could find a willingness to laugh. We would sit and just enjoy each other's company. I got a sense that there wasn't much time left, but every minute was a quality minute. Every minute we only attempted to enhance each other's lives. And this had been skewed as it can be in the world of mind that I wanted him dead. This girl said, I'm going back. And everybody said, talk to me about that rumor. I'm going to straighten it out and tell them who you are. And tell, me, tell them how much love you have in you and how much love you have for Raph. Uh, the next time I went to the clinic, it was quite a different story. You know, people greeted me warmly. Uh, Raph is buried in our graveyard here, in this little tiny village in Switzerland. Uh, the services were here. It got confusing for everybody as to what to do because it was so sudden. He was so young. And uh, during the funeral ceremony, I was pretty non-functional. It was quite emotional. But uh, I went up to his office manager and I said, you know, how long have we known each other? And she said, it will be two years in about two weeks. And it shocked me. we become such close friends. I thought we'd been close friends for a long, long time. But it was less than two years. Now it's been ten years since he's passed away. I sure am glad I knew him. Uh, we had big plans. Uh, he was a great guy, and wherever we are, Raph, if you're another incarnation, I hope you're having fun. www.micpeakperformance.com